Hello, this is Tom from Never Center. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you in Pixel Mash how uh, I created this animated pixel art thing with this sort of Halloween theme uh, skull and crossbones animation with this little flame. And uh, rather than creating this from scratch in this video, I'm just going to go through each of the layers and talk about what I did to make this animation and uh, just show you some of the options and the ways that Pixel Mash makes something like this uh, really easy to make. So um, I'm just gonna hit the spacebar button to stop it from animating for a minute here. Um, let's just start from the top of these layers here in my layer editor here. And I'll just show you how each of these things are constructed and um, animated to make it uh, work like this. And anytime I start and stop the animation, I'm just hitting the spacebar. Um, and I can hit left and right to go through the frames one by one. So let's start with this fire. Um, and when I click on any of these layers, if I click and hold, it will just isolate that layer and show only that layer so it makes it easier to see what's going on. Um, I'm going to actually turn off each of these layers here, um, except for the one that I'm talking about. So I'll leave the background on. Let's start with the fire and I'll just start it playing again so you can see it's sort of got these little flames going. Um, if I turn off the pixelization, you can see what this looks like in the high res mode. Uh, and I'll step through these flames and you can see what's happening here. What I've got here in the fire is I've actually got a few layers. I've got um, a main layer and then a tip and a lower. And if, if I turn off this tip part and this lower part, you can just see here's the main fire layer. And as I animate it, you can see as I'm stepping through the frames, you can see it's just moving around. So um, for each of these animation frames, I'm just sort of jiggling it. And when it's pixelized, that gives it a little bit of a, a danciness like that. Um, also, you can see on the layer effects here, I've got auto shade on. Um, and so again, if I go back into pixelized mode, um, and by the way, when I switch back into pixelized mode, you can do that either with this button up here or the forward slash button. Uh, so one of the things I've got on here is auto shade. And you can see when I toggle that on and off, that's just uh, uh, basically shading it automatically using this angle control down here to determine the, the light source. And, you know, fire is not actually shaded, but this makes a nice way to sort of give it some some automatic color variation. You can see this also has an outline around it. Where that outline is coming from is this main fire layer, which uh, just called fire rather than main, uh, that this is embedded in. That's where this outline part is. And so that outline effect on that outer layer combined with this auto shade on this inner layer, and then just jiggling it around for each animation frames, uh, that gives it that sort of dancing and that nice outline. Now what this tip part is right here, I'm going to turn that back on and let me uh, go back into uh, high res mode. I just made this, uh, if I click on here, I just made this sort of single flame bit and as I step through the frames it's just, I'm just moving that around to give it a little bit more um, a little bit more shape differentiation from frame to frame of this fire. And so when I again go back and have these uh, all the layer effects applied, you can see it's uh, giving kind of a, a bigger variation than I get just by moving the the uh, that main flame around. Um, and since it's a child of this main layer and this fire layer, it's getting the layer effects of each of those applied to it. So the the um, auto shade that I have here. Um, on what I'm calling the main layer of the fire. Um, that's auto shading with the, the shape of this tip factored in, if that makes sense. So um, it's, it's auto shading it as if this were all sort of one thing, even though it's actually two pieces to this layer. Uh, and then this lower part is just some more dark orange at the bottom of this. And with this lower layer, let me go back into high res mode um, so you can see this more easily. This layer I have masked to parent clicked on here. If I unclick this, you'll see 
it's just a layer that I just sort of painted and I'm again I'm just sort of moving it around between the frames so that uh, it makes that lower orange part dance and this when I click mask to parent it uh, makes it so that it, it only appears within pixels that are already colored in by the parent layer which is this main layer and so that keeps it within those outlines so you can see in high res mode as I'm stepping through it it's just really I'm just transforming it moving it around let me um, select it again and you can see the the transformation box on it it's just shifting it around and then when I pixelize that and apply the layer effects that's when I get this nice dancing flame with the uh, the different colors and um, the flames changing shape and everything so let me just play that again in action and so those various layer effects that I add on there um, bring that all to life. And one thing that uh, another thing that I've done on this um, on this lower one is I I use this restrict color palette effect uh, because I, I basically after I initially made that lower part I decided I wanted to change the color. And if I go into high res mode you can see it's a little bit better. But um, as I toggle that effect off, oh actually when I'm in high res mode you can't see the effect going off and on. But um, this restrict color palette with the tolerance turned all the way up lets me basically color that layer whatever color I want. So right now this is orange. You can see if I color it blue or green or something, um, it's changing that and the auto shade is, um, is uh, adjusting this other color a little bit. But let me undo that. But anyway, that's how I sort of dialed in a more accurate color for what I wanted. and That's why that's on that layer right there. Um, all right, so that's the fire. So now let's go to uh, bone front and bone back. I accidentally parented that. Um, let's turn off the fire and turn on this bone. And so this, when it's animated, is just uh, rotating back and forth like this. If we go into high res mode, you can see I've just painted a very simple bone shape. Um, and just at each of the animation frames, I'm rotating it. And one of the things that I did to, to make this um, happen like this is, uh, like you'll notice that, um, that uh, say animation frame two is the same as animation frame eight. And what you can do to make those exactly the same, you can either um, copy the animation frame and paste the animation frame, and that will um, copy all the attributes uh, but that'll do it across layers, so it'll basically make everything in animation frame, wherever you're copying from, um, apply to the animation frame you're pasting to. Uh, and this I don't want that, I just want just this bone to be the same in frame 2 as in frame 8. So with that, what I did was I did um, copy layer, and then I just do paste layer transform, because all I'm animating on these frames is the transform the rotation amount of this layer and so when I, since I wanted 2 to be exactly the same as 8 I just copied layer transform uh, there and then went to frame 8 and pasted it on that same layer pasted that layer transform. Um, now for layer effects uh, let me turn back on pixelization um, again, I'm just using auto shade so that it's automatically applying this sort of darker gray shading down here and it's using this angle that's specified in here and then just an outline um, and that will make it so it's automatically updated the shading even as this is rotating the lighting stays consistent uh, to keep it looking like that. And so I did the same thing with these both these um, bone layers. And so that's how I got them to do this little cross uh, skull and crossbones dancing configuration here. So if I turn on the fire, you can see both of those going at the same time. And I'll pause that. All right, now let's uh, let's do the skull. So skull top and skull bottom. Uh, you actually can't see much of the skull bottom behind those crossbones, but this is what it's doing as it's animating. Um, now with this, um, they're sort of both created the same. I'll just do the skull top. But the first thing you can see I've got on here 
on the layer effects for this is mirroring. So um, if I turn off the pixelization and all the effects, you can see this is what I painted for the skull top. I only did one half because I knew I wanted the, the right half to look exactly like the left half. And so with this mirroring on, let me go back into pixelize, I can turn mirroring on and off. It's just taking whatever is drawn on the left half and mirroring it over to the right half. And so I don't have to, um, I don't have to accurately uh, paint it mirrored. You can see actually if I, if I move this layer that it will sort of keep it mirrored. And it's nice to be able to have it non-destructively mirrored like that in case you want to change something later, but let me undo that. Um, so that's the mirroring, the auto shading again. If I turn this off and on, you can see that it's automatically shading it from a light source up there. Um, and I could change that here, undo that, and then a simple outline. And so as I animate this again, this is just, I'm animating the transform. So I just went through each frame here and uh, just moved it and I held down shift while I moved it to constrain it uh, to up and down. And uh, any frames that I wanted to be the same, uh, there's, let's see, it looks like frame three is the same as frame five. Uh, you can again copy and paste the, the layer transform. Uh, skull bottom is basically the same thing there. Uh, nothing that different. And I think that's about it. Oh, this background to the skull. Um, I just drew in this sort of blob just so that behind the eye sockets and the nose socket there could be a color. And I did something similar with this uh, where I used this restrict color palette effect to color in the entire layer. So you can see the actual layer that I painted was black. Um, if I go back into pixelized mode with this restrict color palette turned all the way up again. It's basically I can set this to be whatever color I want and it will be exactly the color that I choose up here in the color chooser. So as I animate this, you can see I can make it red or whatever. Um, and I kind of, I liked the sort of crystal blue look the best. Let me undo to get back to that. So now with all these turned back on, um, again, that's my little animation there. And the background, uh, I did this restrict color palette also, and you can change the background to whatever color you want. Um, so I will link this file in the video description. You can download it and take a look at it yourself and pull it apart and play with things to sort of see how it works. Um, and uh, you can export this um, as uh, either an animated GIF or a sprite sheet or just a single frame if you choose one of these single frame ones. Um, and then, you know, do whatever you need to either in your game engine or just for your artwork. But I hope that's helpful and enjoy Pixel Mash. It has just been released and we're gonna add a bunch of cool new stuff to it uh, sort of incrementally. So um, as you send in suggestions, uh, if you go to nevercenter.com slash pixel mash, you can uh, scroll down and you'll see a place where you can um, email us with suggestions. It's just pixelmash at nevercenter.com. And we would love to hear your ideas and incorporate things um, and expand this to just be hopefully the best pixel art editor at any kind of pixel art. Thanks so much.